Parler de Talking about scenarios, climatic scenarios, raises the question of what is a scenario. A scenario is quite simply the representation of a possible future for prospective purposes. Therefore, this future story must be an exploration. It must be plausible, that is, it must not be incompatible with the laws of physics. It should not move away too much from the economic theory, or if so, in an explicit way. A scenario should not be likely. We are not even trying to estimate the likelihood of the scenario ever coming true. It's not there to represent the complexity of the surrounding world. Therefore, the scenario may be simplistic or idealized. Finally, a scenario may be utopic or unacceptable. Climatic scenarios are not there to become a rule, impose a given type of future. Therefore, we look at not one, but several scenarios at the same time. There are two approaches in a way a climatic scenario is uh, prepared. The first one is a sequential approach. We're talking about a socio-economic scenario, which may then be translated in greenhouse effect gas emission scenario. And then, because we have knowledge on the uh, biogeochemical cycles, we can translate this in a scenario on concentration of greenhouse effect gases, and we can assess the rate of heavy forcing associated with the concentration tracks, and finally predict a uh, climatic projection. Conversely, there is the other approach, which is called the reverse approach, starting from a scenario on greenhouse effect concentrations, a radiative forcing scenario, from where we can assess, estimate a climatic scenario based on which we can a posteriori reconstruct socioeconomic scenarios which will be compatible with the uh, greenhouse effect gas scenario. The uh, radiative forcing scenario could therefore correspond to several scenarios. This is the approach chosen for the fifth IPCC assessment scenario or report, because first we can move away from the political debate and two, because it allows to take into consideration scenarios with policies that aim at reducing greenhouse effect gases, emissions. Here we have uh, RCP scenarios, representative concentration pathways used for the fifth IC IPCC report. Radiative forcing varies between uh, two values providing the name of the uh, RCP scenarios 2.6 and 4.5 extreme scenarios sorry 8.5 extreme scenarios for radiative forcing these scenarios imply carbon dioxide emissions shown on the left for the RCP 2.6 scenario emissions should reach a maximum ceiling value very quickly and decrease down to the year 2080, whereas for the RCP scenario 8.5, emissions will continue increasing until they reach 27 CO2 gigatons in 2100, three times more than the current emissions. These scenarios were then prolonged beyond the 21st century in a stylized manner, and we have dotted lines on the two graphics represented this. Carbon dioxide is not the only greenhouse effect gas that we need to make predictions on. We are looking at scenarios for the other greenhouse effect gases, especially methane, CH4, and nitrous oxide, N2O, shown on this picture. The green, the gray areas try to surround all of the possible future scenarios with and without emission mitigation policies being implemented. Greenhouse effect gases are not the only factors influencing the climate. There are also short life cycle pollutants which have an impact on the climate, such as sulfur dioxide, responsible for a negative radiative forcing because it forms a sulfur aerosols and cools down the climate, or nitrogen oxide, which combined with volatile compounds, organic compounds, forms ozone and other greenhouse effect gas. These short life cycle pollutants also have an impact on air quality. Generally speaking, one may consider that their emissions or their concentrations will decrease during the 21st century 
at a rate that will depend on the various types of assumptions made on economic growth and the convergence between developing countries and industrialized countries, developed countries. There are also different parameters uh, in order to characterize the socioeconomic scenarios, such as uh, primary energy consumption, the energy mix, and two more parameters shown here, the emission factor expressed in kilograms of carbon released in the atmosphere by unit of uh, used energy. This factor decreases rather slowly for the RCP 6 and 8.5 scenarios, which are very strong in radiative forcing, but decreases much faster for scenarios 4.5 and 2.6 due to the introduction of renewable energies and also due to the implementation of the uh, uptake and uh, carbon uptake and storage just uh, at the exit of the chimneys for thermal production power plants. Here we have the energy intensity on the right-hand side, the quantity of energy needed to produce $1 worth of PIB wealth, in other terms. This factor decreases in all scenarios but it depends on the type of economy towards which the scenario is oriented. In conclusion, a climatic scenario requires good knowledge of emissions or greenhouse effect gas concentrations, good knowledge of emissions and pollutant concentrations when these pollutants are short life cycle pollutants, the way land is used on the continent because this is a limiting uh, condition, and finally, if we want to tra translate the uh, climatic projections uh, with uh, the impact projections for both the ecosystem and human society, we, one needs to combine the uh, projections with uh, underlying socioeconomic data, which can be found in scenarios such as population, degree of urbanization, society structure, agriculture, industry, etc. There are still unanswered questions, open questions on climatic scenarios. One may wonder, for instance, whether what about extreme scenarios uh, 2.6 and 8.5? Are they plausible? And we need to analyze parameters and assumptions uh, with socioeconomic uh, models such as the rate at which emissions uh, are going to be decreased. Can we reach a decrease of several percent per year or yield growth for uh, agriculture and extraction uh, of uh, fossil fuels, bearing in mind that uh, socioeconomic scenarios are not independent from climatic scenarios because there is retroaction or possible retroaction between climate evolution and climatic policies. One may expect if sensitivity of the climate to greenhouse effect is uh, high, that uh, policies will become more ambitious in the 21st century. Other parameters uh, have to be taken into consideration, but they are uncertain or sometimes not taken into consideration. For instance, the fact that there may be massive emission of uh, methane hydrates uh, contained in the marine sediments or massive uh, emissions of CO2 and CH4 following uh, thaw of pergelisol in Siberia and Canada. And on the socio-economic side, we can envisage uh, technological uh, divides or the use of geoengineering climate uh, techniques. Therefore, these scenarios must be considered as one option for the future.